Hey guys, Adrian here for the Digital Dojos, and today this video is brought to you by Parts for iPods at partsforipods.com. These guys are the guys who uh, actually sponsored me with the parts uh, to do this little guide for you guys. I know I've done a, a repair before of an iPod Touch 4th Gen. A lot of you guys wanted to see a more in-depth look. I actually think the other video was a little bit, uh, I had a lot of detail in there, and I talked a lot about like how to repair the screen, the steps. Um, and it's a little bit of a long-winded video, but uh, it is a pretty much step-by-step -step guide, but a lot of people want some tips and stuff like that a little bit more in depth with the parts and everything what you need uh, etc so I kinda laid everything out here this is more this isn't really the guide where you can watch that whole video but this is uh, I mean I'm gonna put a screen on as this one is a damaged this one had a damaged screen um, and they actually parts for iPods uh, uh, what do you call that supplied me with a new 4G uh, LCD and digitizer along with the adhesive even a new um, home button uh, flex cable. So this one right here, this is if you ever have issues when uh, pushing your home button, it's jammed. Basically, the home button, which is this thing right here, pushes down on that little black uh, little button right there. I don't know if, you, if the camera will focus here. That little black uh, little knob right there pushes down, and that is basically what uh, hits the little you know the little contact, that gold contact right there, I believe. Um, and your home button, that's how it works. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is the inside of an iPod Touch 4th Gen. If you didn't see my uh, teardown uh, video, it's uh, not too bad to get the screen off. If you've cracked your screen, basically what you want to do is you want to use any sort of, if you have a pry tool and or a uh, what they call a spudger, which I'm going to uh, show you in a, little, uh, in a little bit. But basically, you just want to go around the edges of the iPod screen uh, pretty much prying it up. Um, you may need to use a heat gun, like a blow dryer or a heat gun to uh, ease the glue because the glue, as you can see when I focus in here, uh, is adhesing the screen to the surrounding uh, kind of bezel. So you have to kind of melt the glue a little bit and edge it off or you know, wear it down. That way it's easier to actually uh, take right off. And then that's why they send you these adhesive double stick uh, pads. That way you can just stick a new screen back on. So let me get everything prepared and I'm going to do a little bit more in depth talking about putting the screen back on and a little bit about the parts. This right here is what the spudger tool looks like. Mine's a little bit worn down. You can get them in metal. I prefer the plastic ones because it is a little bit dangerous with the metal ones, but they do work well as well. I've used that in the past. Basically, the general idea, if you haven't seen the video, is you go around the edge of a screen, uh, basically following it along and kind of prying upwards. Not too hard as you can. Like I said, the screen's already broken. It doesn't matter too much. But basically, you want to pry it up. And starting from the bottom, and when you lift up, these two cables right here will be connected. This long one right here will be connected under this where I'm showing it right now. It'll be actually under the motherboard, while this other connector will be pushed down right here where that little uh, slot is right here. So again, you'll have one connector right here behind this metal thing, and you'll have another one right here. Basically, it's your LCD and digitizer. Now, there's a main difference. In the iPod 4th Gen, uh, this one right here, the LCD and digitizer, as you can see here, it's a very thin piece of uh, technology here is fused into one. The glass part is what they call the digitizer. That's what handles all the touch functionality, everything that, you know, the whole touch feedback. Sometimes you'll have an LCD that works where you'll see the picture, but the touch won't work, which was the case with the old screen on this iPod. Sometimes you'll crack the LCD and the glass on top will still be fine. So uh, either way, you'll always have to order this one part by itself. If you ever see a part that sells separately for cheaper, do not buy it because Unless you have the tools to fuse them together, it's really a pain. So just go for it, fuse together. You can get it for like 40 bucks on Amazon or for obviously parts for iPods. They also provide her in the UK, I believe. They're located in the UK. So um, a very, very great source as well. They have tons and tons of parts. So um, again, let's look at the screen here. Uh, let's get a little bit into it. Now by default, you'll have this metal plate on, which is kind of protector for the uh, connectors and motherboards and all of that. And you'll notice all these little chips here are from broken glass from the old screen when I took it off. Now, notice when you take this off, you can see the old uh, flex cable thing which they provide me with, which I'm not really going to be installing in this video, maybe in a separate video. Um, basically, when you take the screen off, you want to make sure you get all the screws off. Unlike the old generation of the iPod or the iPhones, there is no screws in the bottom of this iPod. It's just straight up the screws are all inside. You'll need a Phillips head. I believe it's a zero head. Um, you can get a tool kit from like iFixit, I believe. Uh, I think parts for iPods has some tools uh, also, so you can look on there. I believe they have like the iPod opening pry tools, uh, stuff like that. You want to get all these screws around the edges, uh, along with uh, the you can see right there in the corner. 
um, and along with the ones on top so we can lift the motherboard after you get this metal plate off. As soon as you get this metal plate off, you are exposed to the, ma the motherboard and battery. The battery is connected up here, as you can see, and can only be removed if you know soldering. So do not mess with the battery unless you know how to solder because uh, if you really, really want your iPod back and you need the data on it, you can find somebody who solders. I don't think it's too difficult. I think actually the solder points are right here for the battery, my mistake. Um, I don't know if it's too difficult. I'm not too experienced with soldering. Um, also, the speaker houses right here, the blue and red wire connect to your uh, speaker, which also can uh, use basic, more basic soldering. I've done that in the past. Um, your headphone jack is right here. If you've ever had issues with your headphones kind of like acting like static or anything like that, and you notice if you push down on your headphone, like your headphone wire, and you get, like it works fine, if you know how to open it up, you can actually push down and even add like a wedge, like fold the piece of paper and add it right here to push down as a contact to kind of wedge down the connector. Sometimes that helps as well. I know a lot of people asked about that. And you can see that little, uh, this connector right here is where the actual headphone jack is connected, so you can disconnect that. Um, you also can remove the two screws to the dock connector if you need to order a new part for that. So basically I'm kind of just running through different scenarios if you ever need to replace anything. Obviously the logic board as a whole can also be removed, but that's a little bit more technical. Front facing camera can easily be removed with that screw right there at the top. Uh, and simply lifting up the motherboard and getting the camera out because the connector is actually under the motherboard. This little uh, connector right here is actually your Wi-Fi antenna. I know it looks all dirty from the broken glass that's stuck to it or pieces of broken glass. But that's actually your Wi-Fi antenna up there, which is also easily removable. Um, right here, this copper thing is actually your rear-facing camera, which can also be removed. The thing above that is your power button, which also can be removed, but I believe needs to be soldered. So, um, a lot of this stuff is easy to remove, but some of it either requires soldering, uh, while other things like cameras and stuff like that can be easily removed. So I'm going to go ahead and lift up the motherboard now, and we'll get back showing you how to place the screen on when lifting up the motherboard is if you can see that it is actually very very flexible and easy to break but it does have some leeway so don't be afraid to kind of lift it up like I am now in order to get access to the bottom ports and uh, connections etc but do keep in mind this is a very thin piece of uh, I'm not sure what the I guess material of the motherboard is but um, you don't want to bend it too much is where you can break it uh, more I'd advise using a tool or if you have somebody, obviously it's more advisable not to be holding a camera while you're doing this, um, but you can kind of pry up as well and lift up like that. Um, and from there, like I said, you can proceed to uh, put the LCD connector on back right here. Um, there's On the back of this is the LCD connector. Under you can also feel the, uh, the connector for the uh, camera, or not the camera, but you can actually see the front facing camera which can be removed uh, right there. And the rear-facing camera is also, I believe, connected under there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect everything and show you that. I think you can see more of an in-depth look at the inside of the motherboard, the flip side, that is. Um, you can see the rear-facing camera there. That connector right there is for, um, if I'm not mistaken, that is the actual connector, I think, is for the front-facing, if I'm not mistaken there. I think, is that the front? Yeah, that's the front-facing. You can actually see the front facing camera connector right there so you need to un actually unscrew that to connect that again um, other than that you also have your LCD cable which is right the connector I should say which is right there which is not wanting to focus in there you go that connector is right there you want to it's a kind of hard to wrap around once you are uh, going it from this angle but this is a more in-depth look definitely at your iPod and how to the inner, you know, innards of it and how to connect everything up so I'm going to go ahead and get the LCD cable back on and we'll uh, take a look at that. Right at this point you can see the uh, LCD cable is connected. You just kind of close it down on the uh, connector there. It is kind of tricky to do and you want to kind of hold the motherboard up while you situate the cable. Then next you're just going to kind of fold the digitizer cable right there down and put it into that slot right there and then screw everything down. Uh, what I recommend, a uh, big tip, is don't screw everything down until you know it works. Obviously, I didn't stress it. I don't think I stressed it enough in the beginning of this video where I actually mentioned it. But um, obviously, make sure your device is powered off before you start anything. I mean, just a huge thing. You want to make sure it's powered off. Um, then, obviously, uh, close everything up, turn it on, make sure everything works, and then go back in to screw everything up. That way, if anything's, you know, uh, if you think you did it right, then you screw everything up or screw everything in, and then it screws up. <laughs> That's kind of ironic there. But um, yeah, then you're going to have a problem. But anyways. Uh, just do that, and then we're going to put the sheet back on and put your home button back in, and we'll see how it goes. 
And that's it, guys. As you can see here, the screen is on, and uh, I already sealed everything up, and it is working. The phone is now charging up, or the iPod, I should say. Now, um, you, you run into a lot of problems, to be honest, when closing. I, I like to think that reassembling it is, more, is much more harder than actually uh, disassembling it. Uh, and the fact that putting the screws back and everything, you lose a lot of stuff. So try and, as much as you can, keep track of everything as you uh, as you go along. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of uneven right here. You can see the screen kind of parts where that where you can see where the case kind of dips in right there. That the sometimes the screen won't uh, close all the way, and that may be due to not putting the adhesive on, so that the metal the screws aren't down all the way. There's a lot of issues that can go wrong when closing everything back up. I just did this to make sure the screen works. I still have to put the adhesive on and all that, but I'm going to save that for another video. These are more of my tips when running through when repairing these. To be honest, it's not as hard as you think. If you ever crack a screen, I've, I've, I've gotten a lot of old screens. Uh, stuff that doesn't even look broken um, is actually broken. Um, I have a, a couple of screens up here where you guys can see these are some old screens right here from the iPod Touch 4th Gen. You can see this one has the the image, uh, the LCD is actually broken. You can see the liquid inside that one. Uh, this one actually looks perfectly fine, but you can actually see that on the back. I think this one has the, the one with the uh, broken cable right there. You can see the broken cable. So, I mean, uh, appearances may deceive you, but anyways, finally this screen is fine. Uh, this one, for my customer anyway, everything's good to go. Um, you can't always get a perfect fit, to be honest. I mean, uh, it just takes experience. Uh, even now, I've repaired a lot. I still get problems where I, it doesn't want to seal all the way. So, I mean, there's still some running through I have to do. Uh, you can see the seal doesn't want to go down in all the way. I mean, you want to get as best as you can before you return it to anybody. But keep in mind, if your iPod ever breaks, this is not too hard to do. I mean, I know it looks kind of, uh, you know, uh, deceiving and all that. It looks kind of tricky and uh, kind of, uh, what do you call it? What's the word? Uh, complicated or, you know, scary at the fact that you have to you know, do everything yourself and you can break it. But, you know, really, it's really a step-by-step -step process. It's not too hard. Uh, you can watch my full guide video. Again, parts for iPods. I'm going to leave the link in the video description below. Provide you with everything you need. I want to give them a huge shout-out for sponsoring these parts anyway for this repair. Uh, for that, guys, look forward to more videos. Hopefully, they'll provide more parts in the future and we can get more repair guides and in-depth tips for you guys in the future. Anyways, guys, check out digitaldojos.com for more content, tutorials, news, etc. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.